Good evening, everyone. Hello, it's April Ryan and Kobe Conversations. This evening is magical for me tonight. Um, I'm excited about the next chapter of my life. Yes, I am going to the Grio. Um, I am going to be five presidents in, come, what is it, January 20th and 24 years, January 13th. So I am now the White House correspondent and Washington bureau chief for the Grio. I am so excited. How are you this evening? And I'm also excited because I have someone that is coming on, but I will introduce him anyway. He's up the road, up 95 uh, in New Jersey. Oh, I am so excited that you are with the Grio. I'm doing really? that excitement. I am. I love the Grio. I Do am. You, well, I, I think Byron Allen's probably watching right now. I'm just so honored. You know, I've been doing this for so long. And it's just, I, you know, I love asking questions about us because yeah. we are still an underserved community. And that's one of the reasons why Senator Cory Booker is on tonight <laughs> in the public conversation. I've got Senator Cory Booker. How are you doing? I'm, I'm happy when we get a chance to hang out. Even though you've you got Spartacus. <laughs> 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 you are good. You're you're a good. As a, John Lewis would say, you are a good troublemaker. I I like good trouble. So um no, but in all in all jokes aside, thank you for joining. This is my last week, and you are still fighting the good fight. And we are just days before the inauguration, weeks before the inauguration of a new president. But people are still hurting. Yeah. There's a stimulus package that is sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk in the Senate, voting rights, sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk in the Senate, and also something that you are pushing. And we need to talk about this because many of us come from agrarian families. When I say agrarian families, many of our grandparents, aunties and uncles, great grandparents, great aunts and uncles, or cousins, what have you, farmed in the South. Yeah, first of all, I don't know if there's anybody that's black uh, who, who traces their history from slavery, who does not have a deep ancestral connection to the land. And yeah. whether it, you know, my grandparents, my, uh, who, you know, went to, my grandfather went to uh, uh, Pine Bluff, agricultural and normal school. And, you know, even when he was a little boy, their, their family had land upon which they grew food for the house. So uh, we know that blacks had what is what hundreds of billions of dollars in today's money worth of land that they were farming. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, the, you know the story, and I know that's what you're getting to, yeah. is what's happened to that. So let me say this. On my, well, I'm actually from an agrarian family on both sides. My father, um, his family uh, farmed in Maryland. My mother, her family farmed in North Carolina. And I'm going to talk about my mother and her father. My, grand, my, mother's, my late mother's father was born in 1901. His name was Owen Oscar Gowan Sr. He had amassed 100 acres of land. Mm. Black man. Mm. In that time, and it wasn't stolen by mm. the government or anything. Wow. And it's so interesting. He, black man, never stolen. He had, when he died, he had 100 acres of land. He farmed tobacco, you know, cotton, all that stuff. But it, it had 14 children. I said, oh, you have wow. a lot of labor. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, but but what the heart of this is looking at what you're trying to do. You're trying to get equity for black farmers through the Justice for Black Farmers Act. Yes. And, and looking, what is it, 1910, the census showed there were like 200,000 black farmers in this nation. Listen to this, guys. 1910, 200,000 black farmers in this nation. Now in 2020, we're seeing 98% of that number gone. 98% mm. of that number gone. Mm. So, and we've heard, and you're trying to help rebuild this, uh, this job opportunity, this, 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 this field where we are now out of, because after slavery, what happened? We sharecropped, we did all, we, we, bought, we bought into agriculture, we bought into that, and now it's all gone. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to prevent racism at the USDA. We saw it yes. at the hands of the USDA with black farmers Yes. You're, trying, you're trying to, uh, what is it in the bill? You're trying to also have internships. What are you trying to do with this? Talk to me about this, the Justice for Black Farmers Act. So good. I, I want to go through in detail with you, but first I just want to highlight what you said. 
um, African Americans come from that, that land. And, and throughout the history of this country, especially the last century, uh, really most of it since 1950, Blacks have lost about 90% of the land that they own. And it was through very overtly discriminatory practices at the USDA uh, that were forcibly sort of bankrupting farmers or moving them off the land or not giving them equal access to programs. And most of us forget that the government in the United States gave away millions and millions of acres of land, but excluded blacks from those giveaways. The Homestead Act that allowed waves of European immigrants to get a lot of land. In fact, a large percentage, 10 to 20 percent of Americans can trace their family wealth back to the land they got through the Homestead Act, excluded African-Americans. And so we have this very tortured history of Blacks having land, being cheated after it, stolen it, stolen, uh, uh, forcibly, um, in many ways, denied the opportunities that white farmers often got uh, to get resources, uh, favorable loans, and other supports that kept them on their land. And that has created this incredible dwindling right now. And so the bill really has a, a four major pillars. Number one is just the end discrimination at the USDA. And it does a lot uh, uh, to create uh, an equity commission overseeing a lot of the practices to make sure that we just end the discrimination and discriminatory practice. It may not be overt and intentional anymore, but often it has discriminatory impact. And then it wants to help to protect the remaining black farmers that we have, that's pillar number two. And to do things like providing pro bono assistance, legal assistance, succession planning, a lot of the things that black farmers run into and provide financing and grants to really help black farmers uh, to stay on. And then this is the part I really love because it's about to restore the land base lost by black farmers. And this is a number of things I'm really excited about. One, the bill creates an equitable land access service within the USDA uh, that provides uh, land grants of up to 160 acres to African-Americans uh, aspiring farmers. Uh, and the land is gonna be provided anywhere in the country. It's gonna be done in coordination with the 1890 land grant colleges. Some of our proudest HBCUs um, allow uh, thousands of black, blacks to return to the land and to help ensure their success, the black farmers will be provided to access to USDA programs, operating loans, mortgages, and other favorable terms. And then this is exciting because this harkens back to again, programs that blacks were excluded from but we are going to create a farm civilian conservation corps that's going to provide paid opportunities for young people from all socially disadvantaged backgrounds, by the way, uh, to learn farming skills while assisting small farmers by serving as farm apprenticeships. So to create a farm apprenticeship program to get folks. And then the final pillar of the whole bill, the fourth pillar, uh, is to make broader farm reforms to the entire system because the farming in America right now is becoming this corporate consolidated factory farming, driving uh, small independent family farmers off their lands of all backgrounds. And we've got to make sure we end that monopolistic practices that's ending the heritage that is all of us as Americans. And so uh, I'm just excited about, about this bill, excited to see who's stepping up to endorse it, to be a part of it, to partner with me on it. It's, it's, uh, it can really make reform. And I've already talked to uh, people in the Biden administration hoping that they're going to really step up on this. So who's supporting it in the Senate? We need to know. Call names out. <laughs> well, uh, we've got uh, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand is on. Uh, um, and uh, I'm working on closing a few other uh, great uh, uh, co colleagues on the Democratic side right now. So we're in talks. We're doing the official rollout tomorrow. So I'll call the rest of the names out then. All right, so so this is, it's interesting, um, you know, I think about the black farmers, John Boyd, the National Black Farmers Association, and them uh, screaming discrimination. And they actually were awarded money during the Clinton years, and it took, I mean, almost 20 years for them to get their money in the Obama administration because the USDA um, discriminated against them. They A lot of these families needed loans for their farms. Yes. And they didn't get them. So you have generations, those farmers are now dead and their children got the money or they've lost their farms and their descendants got the money um, if they could prove that, you know, dad or mom really lost it. So what it sounds like you're doing, and, and they correct, they're trying to correct, they're still even trying to correct that wrong at this point, but you're trying to repair a wrong as well with the Homestead Act. So this is in a, in a way another, another piece of reparations, this time for the black farmers, am I correct? Yes, yes. And I forgot, 
Gillibrand and Elizabeth Warren are the two that are already announced. Elizabeth Warren, I can't okay. forget her. She's been a fierce partner no, of mine okay. on so many, so many great uh, bills. Um, uh, um, but yeah, so, so in other words, you're right about repairing the breach. And this bill really is looking to do that. You cannot have a measurable, quantifiable harm done to Af African-American farmers and not be able to say that the government has a responsibility for correcting that harm. And so we know the specific practices that USDA did. Uh, we, we can know the farms that were going out of business. We, we know that there's an obligation now to fix that harm, and that's what we're trying to do. Do you think Vilsack will be able to um, help you repair this breach? I, I definitely want to talk to him and tend to do that. Um, and uh, I, I have a lot of trust in, with Kamala and uh, and and Joe, there. Forgive, I should be. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, you, yeah, With, yeah. You know, this is you're very familiar right now. I'm so Vice sorry. Vice President Elect Kamala Harris and and, Mike, and President Elect Joe Biden. My mama, my mama taught me better than that. <laughs> yeah. I'm so used to them being friends, but I don't care who it is. Even if my mama became president of the United States, I'd call her Madam President. That's so right. uh, 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 the the President Elect and the Vice President Elect. I know where their hearts are. I know where their <laughs> intentions are, and so I, I look forward to trying to work with them. Uh, to make this bill real and and uh, to get uh, things that can be done through executive action done. So we're going to be watching for this tomorrow, most definitely. Um, so is there a companion bill in the House? Uh, we are actually working with some folks right now. You know, we made some history uh, with uh, uh, Chairman Scott, uh, first HBC, first, excuse me, African-American head of a committee of the Agricultural Committee. And so I've got some really good friends there that um, I, I'm from the uh, CBC, Congressional Black Caucus, that I know are going to help to make this real. So we'll get our House partnership together soon. Mm. So I want to ask you a couple questions. We only have a few minutes with the great Senator Cory Booker because we're going to be on something. Matter of fact, at, at eight o'clock, uh, we're doing the NAACP Town Hall. Yes, we are. COVID. Yes, we are. I'm moderating and you're going to be one of the panelists. We've got some major people um, coming on that to talk about, to inform us about COVID as these vaccines are going out. And the Black community needs to know. We need to be... We also need to be vaccinated. Let's just say it clear. We need to get vaccinated. And I know there, I, we have a right to be skeptical and cynical given the history we all share. But this... Tuskegee? Is, yes. But, but there's been a lot... I mean, we've seen in the medical industry from forced castrations... Uh, uh, to, uh, uh, medical experiments. There have been horrible, horrible things done uh, to African American community throughout the history of our country. But I just want to let folks know we are getting disproportionately impacted by the COVID virus. Our communities having death rates significantly higher than the national average, and we can't let that continue. We have to stop it. And so I'm just, I just want folks to know I'm stepping up and getting the vaccine as soon as my time comes. And uh, I'm hoping that people will do that. So our communities, black communities, don't continue to see death rates as high as they are. We've got to have courageous soldiers that are going to go out there and take this vaccine, show people the way. When is your time coming for that? I don't know when well, I don't know when I will be. I'm not trying to jump any lines or anything like that. I'm going to do what I'm told is the ordering of it for my job. And uh, I know it's not first, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but it's definitely not last. You're a senator. You're a senator. I, I imagine I'm somewhere uh, not not last. Uh, so I hope last is probably kids, uh, healthy children, and, and the like. Uh, so I know I'm not that because I'm. I don't know if you notice, April. I'm getting old. Hmm. Well, I'm not. I'm, say, <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm I try. I, I try to. I tried to pull you in. Tried to pull you in. I'm, I'm not. Go, I'm not I laid, that a, I laid a trap. No, no. And I stepped right around it. I did yes, you did. My stilettos stepped around. <laughs> so listen, so let's talk about this real fast in the time. So thank you for giving us the information about, about the vaccines. And we need to know, guys, tune into the NAACP form. Yeah. Go on my timeline and, and look, because we have to know. You've got a great Instagram in account. I was checking it out. You post a lot of important information. I do. Go to her, I do. Go to her timeline. Go yes. to her timeline. Yes. Um, so listen, so we've got Mitch McConnell is still there. Um, he's... he's um, my concern is that Trumpism is still going to remain, meaning the mentality. Even though the president may be gone in January, the mentality will be there. And Mitch McConnell has now has that mentality. On his desk with that mentality is the stimulus package. People are hurting. 
People are losing their homes. People are losing their jobs. People need to eat. You've got the voting rights that we're supposed to be going to see another election in January. And we're wondering about, once again, uh, voter suppression issues of voter irregularities um, in this election because we're voting without the full force of the Voting Rights Act. What say you as it relates to Mitch McConnell in this moment of hurt and questioning on matters of race and money? We, we are in the, in the midst of the third largest mass casualty event in American history. And it's disproportionately affecting not just black people, but low income people, Native Americans, uh, it's really feasting upon the vulnerable and exposing uh, the shallowness of our continuum of care for the elderly, for the low income, uh, and for uh, disadvantaged minorities. And so everything about the uh, getting resources out is not only an issue of compassion and empathy, but it is also an issue of, of issues of civil rights and social justice. And so to have a crisis this large and to have uh, our, all of our peer nations being dramatically more generous. We are the richest nation in the world, but yet we are one of our peer nations. We're one of the stingiest in terms of helping small businesses, helping people who are unemployed, helping people who are facing eviction, helping children who are hungry and families uh, that are hurting. And so I, I just, I want us to be a nation that not only says I love America, but love is not sentimentality. Love is not a slogan. Or, or salute. Love is, if you love this country, you gotta love its people. And if you love each other, then you do for each other. You're there for each other. And so this nation of wealth uh, should be doing a lot bigger uh, stimulus uh, uh, COVID bill than we're seeing right now. Mm. Um, and, and two last questions before you go. Taking back the Senate, how important is it for Ossoff and Warnock um, to win for Democrats? How important is that to you? I, I just got to lean back and, and tell you this. It's, a, it's, it's the difference between all the big things that folk want. Mm -hmm. all, and I don't care what side of the aisle. You know, people want to raise the minimum wage. People want uh, better access to health care. People want lower prescription drugs. People want uh, investments in broadband infrastructure. I mean, all of the big things. People would love to see poverty. We could cut child poverty in half in our first tax bill. And so what I'm saying to you, if, if, if you want these things, if Mitch McConnell controls the Senate, those, will, those bills will not come to the floor. If Mitch McConnell doesn't control the Senate and it's a 50-50 tie, it'll force a lot of bipartisan work. But Chuck Schumer will let those bills come to the floor to be voted upon. And so that, that's like all the things I hear from the barbershop. Yes, I go to the barbershop. Uh, to uh, the barbershop of the beauty salon, to, to uh, the supermarket, every place I go where I'm connecting with folk, folk in my family, cousins, you name it. Uh, the things that people want, the only way we can get them done really to secure the ability to get them done is to win those two seats in Georgia. So if you know anybody in Georgia, from Macon to Atlanta, to uh, if you know anybody in Georgia, uh, please make sure they are getting out to vote. There, there's never been an election that, that were so few one state will connect, will affect the destiny of so many, an entire nation, and in fact, generations yet unborn. So please vote. And if you can't vote in Georgia, you can give them five bucks. Go online to these folks. Give them, give them some money. Go to Warnock or Ossoff.com and, and give these guys some, some help or some support. If you, get, if you don't have money, it's hard times. Give an hour of your time to volunteer. They got places to sign up to volunteer, to call into Georgia, talk to other Democrats or other, other folks to get them out to vote. So, so everyone, so if Warnock and Ossoff win, it will mean 50-50. It will be, it will be split down the middle and Kamala Harris. Who, well, Vice, I thought we call, I would call him Madam Vice President. I was going to say, Vice President-elect. <laughs> see, I was going to say it. Okay, Vice President-elect, well, I'll say it first. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris yes. will be the one who will be the tiebreaker. So, um and that's that's how tight this is. And right now the races are neck and neck. That's what the polls neck are saying. So neck. neck and neck. So neck you know, you might like like by this we, much. We saw a bunch of house races be decided by like six votes, one of them in Iowa, twelve votes another, another I mean, this is like that can make the difference. So if it's that neck and neck, get out and vote or contribute and help to move other people to vote. Early voting, you could early vote today. That's, that's people your 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 commenters are very good. There's even people talking about how much they like your blouse. 
Why are you know. watching my comments? Why are you like <laughs> you were soft in the comments as you lay back? I'm I'm all up in the comments. You I all wanna, up in, I all wanna up know in who, the pool who are the black people behind you? Who's that who's the man with the, the That's yeah, the who, judge and that's that's the oh my gosh, you all up in my Okay, hold on. These are my awards. People say my room, my office, this is my actual office, it's too busy. But I need some inspiration. I've got hold on. I want to know who the black person on the right and the black person on the left are. That's, but I love this is Rosa Parks. This is an award that I received from Rose. Uh, uh, Ro yes, it's the um. Hold on, and you see that's my a slippers. great award. That's yes. a great award. I got it in Mississippi um, uh, at the Civil Rights Museum. We were honoring Rosa Parks for the Civil One last year. That's this great. Picture, when I was on the View, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Uh, yeah. I'm a son of a Delta. I'm a son of a Delta. Good for you. Um, I got on my was. This is the judge, and this is Kenya back here. So I keep it black. I keep it very black. All my, not all of my awards, but a lot of them. So <laughs> that's wonderful. So that's this is my office. Why are you all up in my house? Because I just I've never been invited before. This is my first time you let me in but your you house. You know what? You know what? Um. So then, okay. So I like crabs. When this is all over, you can bring your boo, and we can go out and sit in the back and have some crabs. That's what girl. You you know I'm a vegan. Okay, well, my, my <laughs> I have a I have a vegan child upstairs, so we can fix some vegan food. All right, all right. Okay. <laughs> I love I love your vegan child. Much <laughs> love 13. to that vegan child. All right, thirteen. So, God. Yes. So one last question before we go, because we have to get ready for this NAACP um, town hall. That's really important. All jokes aside, guys. Yes. We need this is life or death. Yes. And it is. It's too much. I've been in the house since March. I went to the hill to. One time, I went to D.C. one time to get my credentials, and I was masked up, gloved up. I almost had a hazmat suit on. I am so scared. The White House is a Petri dish. This is no joke, guys. We need you to tune into this town hall meeting um, at 8 o'clock Eastern. So last question. Yes. President Donald John Trump is leaving the White House. But before he leaves, and, you know, he's taking the world down with him. He's slashing and burning. And I want to go to something before I get to the slash and burn. Over the last couple of months when he was campaigning, he used your name mm. like a curse word. Yes. He went back to old racist stereotypes. Yeah. Talking about, oh, if Joe Biden wins, he's going to have people come in the suburbs that yes, you don't yes. want. And Cory Booker is going to be head of HUD. It, was, it went back to old stereotypes to me. He said I was coming to the suburbs, taking over the suburbs, all the kind of racist tropes you're absolutely yeah, right yeah it's like what white, white women are scared of black men that old thing from years ago like the emmett till time remember you know i i was like people don't understand how racist and deadly this is what did you think about that I, it was sad more than anything it didn't you know first of all i got a flood of incredible i was trending on twitter with people inviting me to their homes and inviting me to shovel their driveways invite me to move in next door so it was nice to see the positive reaction from so many suburbanites. But, it, but, but it's just sad. It's sad that we have, for the last four years, had a president who routinely uh, engaged in tired uh, race, racial tropes, uh, uh, sexist language, just demeaning and degrading other Americans, demeaning and degrading the places that Black people come from, whether it's so-called S-hole countries or the way he talked down about American cities. Uh, this is a president who's been deg degrading, dividing, uh, uh, pitting us against each other. I'm just, I'm so, I cannot wait until Vice President, uh, President-elect Joe Biden uh, begins to bring honor and kindness and grace and, and love back to that, to that seat where he really is about elevating Americans, not pushing people down in order to try to pull, pull himself up. And lastly, what do you feel about the fact that this president is not following tradition. He is not allowing for peaceful transfer of power. He is slashing and burning as he goes. We don't know what's going to happen. We just found out that he's going to go to Mar-a-Lago for the holiday, and he's coming back. And we don't know what he's going to do on January 20. We, j no. we don't know what his mindset is. And um, what say you? What are your thoughts with this as we close out? Well, this has been, a, this has been an awful chapter in American history where he has worked actively to undermine our democracy by making it so that thousands of Americans, a very large percent, have fallen prey to his misinformation about this election. And our, election, our, our, our democracy really depends upon trust. 
And he has eroded that and therefore eroded the fabric of our country. And it's going to take time to repair that. We, I'm on the Foreign Relations Committee, and there are lots of other examples around the globe of people who lost faith in their election systems and tore down their democracy, engaged in extremism, as we're seeing right now, as electors had to get security and safety. You're seeing him foment that, and that has caused other democracies, less established, topple. And so he has wounded our democracy. We all have an obligation, regardless of your background, to try to heal that. And I'm glad to see, even though there's a lot of enablers down here in Congress, I am happy to see a lot of Republicans around the country call him out for what he's doing and, uh, and fight against him, even at the cost of people he, had, he fired as a result of them speaking up and telling mm. the truth. You got anything else you want to add? I just, I want to add, I want to end where I began. Congratulations to you. You are, you are really in the era of Trump. I think the world got to know you and got to understand that you are a truth teller and that you are fierce. You're not to be messed with. You're the kind of journalist that falls into the great tradition in African-American journalism about speaking truth to power. No matter how, who you are, how powerful you are, you stood up uh, for, for the best of who we are. And I, I just want to thank you for that and congratulate you for joining the, uh, the, 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 the Giro. Well, let me say this. I'm going to be calling you so you can um, come on the Grio because we're going to be doing this on the, the Grio, Grio now. Now. Listen, so. we, we, I, I have done so many Grio interviews but ain't no interview like an interview with April. So uh, ain't no party like an April Ryan party because an April Ryan party don't stop. Ow! <laughs> I'll see you on the grill. <laughs> you're not going to change your. You're not changing your. 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 You're not changing any of your handles. On Twitter I don't, I don't or. Know, well, I don't know. Well, no, I, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do but it. The grill is the grill. I'm with the April Ryan and the grill. We like. But the grill and the grill has a lot of legitimacy amongst black people. We trust the grill. All right. Yeah. Hey, guys, we getting endorsements right here. So. <laughs> there you go. So listen, I appreciate you, Senator Cory Booker, friend of Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and <laughs> President-elect Joe Biden, because he was calling me by the first name. No, no, because we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, even with President Trump, we have to put president in front of it. Amen. Out of respect for the uh, office. Amen. I like that you do that. Out of That's respect important. for the office. Yes. He tried, to get yes. Me. he tried to get me, but even out of respect for the office, you call them that. Amen. Nonetheless, and respect for you, Senator Cory Booker of, of New Jersey. I thank you. I will see you in about, I'll see you soon. All uh, right. In the 8 o'clock hour. Thank I'll you so I'll see you at the 8 o'clock hour, and I'll see you on the grill. That's right, sir. Thank you, All Senator right. Cory Booker, guys. Thank you, All sir. Bye-bye, right. so everybody. Guys, so, guys, this has been great. Wow, Senator Cory Booker. You can't get any better than that. And he's talking about the Justice for Black Farmers Act, basically asking for reparations for the black farmers. Look it up. Read about it. It's important. So uh, what I want you guys to do is understand that we play a part in this country. And sometimes this country has not been so nice to Black America or any other part of America. And then you have people who bring it to your attention. And that's what COVID Conversations is about. Informing, uplifting, and inspiring. And tonight, I hope you were informed for these 28 minutes or so with Senator Cory Booker, who thinks he's funny. Ha, 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 I'm playing. <laughs> he is funny. He's a nice guy. Um, but I want you to know that COVID Conversations is winding down this week. And I want you to stay tuned because we got great things coming at the Grio. And I want you, you love me. I love you back. I, wanna sh I want you to show me your support when we start doing this over there. We're going to be doing a lot of great things. We're going to be reporting from the White House. I'm just so excited about this. And I'm going to tell you something, Byron Allen, um, he laid the red carpet out for me. And I'm just thrilled and pleased as punch and how he was honored. Byron was like this week and he said, we're going to make this. We're going to fix this. We're going to do this deal now. I was dragging my feet. <laughs> and he was like, we're going to do this. And I said, yes, sir. And this is the best thing that I think that I could have done. And it will be 24 years for me, January 13th, five presidents, January 20th. So guys, stay tuned. The best is yet to come. But I encourage you, I encourage you, seriously, I need you guys to move over at eight o'clock to join the Unmasked, a COVID-19 virtual town hall series at 8 p.m. The NAACP, I'm moderating it. It's a dial-in. You got to listen, guys, because this is about you. This is life and death. COVID is a destroyer at every level. 
We want to see you next year. We want to see you at the picnic. We want to see you uh, at the church. We want to see you at homecoming. We want to see you guys. It's important. Peace out, guys. I love you. IG Live, thank you for all of this since March. COVID Conversations. And tomorrow night, I have my line sister on. I have my line sister, not Cheryl and Eiffel. I have Andre Day. My line sister from Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. All my soul wars tune in. Tomorrow night is Andre Day, our soul war. We are going to rise up. She's got a new movie out. She's got a great project. Guys, this is all about supporting one another. I love you much. Thank you. This has been a blessed day. It's been a magical day. The kids were out sledding in the snow, and I'm here taking calls and dealing with, with my new chapter in life. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Why is this not turning off? Okay.